Hello folks, uh, today we are going to look at the wonderful, exciting world of pliers. So let's get set up here. I'm just going to go through some different pliers. Uh, that might be a, a good idea to have on hand or buy if you're just kind of your average homeowner, um, uh, hobbyist, DIY, or whatever. Um, I won't cover the whole uh, gambit today, but I will. I'll show you my my pliers drawer here. So let's go. Let's go into it. Um, I'll start from the outside and work my way in. So these are an old. Uh, they should probably be considered an antique uh, by now. Um, these at first they're very interesting looking. Uh, you can see there's some uh, wire cutters off to the side. Um, but other than that, they look like a pretty normal pair of pliers until you realize that they are, in fact, equal parallel pliers. That's what these are called. These were for, I believe, uh, I believe these are for fencing. Uh, they don't, I don't know if they really make these anymore. Um, these are mostly, uh, you find these in antique stores, things like that. They're probably from the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, this one is a pretty common brand. I believe it is Bernard. Yes, uh, parallel pliers. So they're kind of interesting. They open up even, of course, if you look at any other pair of pliers, they don't open up. They open up in a V shape. These are even. Um, I've used these a few times. Uh, they're kind of handy if you need to grab something nice, uh, something long, you can grab onto it and then clamp down on it and it grabs it the full length. Uh, so that's very handy. Um, and they're hollowed out too, so if you're grabbing something skinny too, you can even get some really good uh, purchase on it. So, uh, really simple, well made. I mean, they're, like I said, they're from the 40s, 50s, are about you know, probably 70 years old. Um, they are folded metal, but they're nice and heavy duty. The head on it is all nicely uh, machined and whatnot. So, yeah, kind of cool to have, but... Probably not something most people are going to have, just something interesting I thought I would show you. So next I will skip the surgical utensils. These are handy to have uh, if you need to crimp like a, uh, like a vacuum line or a, uh, maybe, even, maybe even a brake line. Nah, that's, probably pretty, that's probably too extreme for a brake line. But if you got to crimp something down and hold it there, these are handy. But uh, we won't talk about those. Let's move on to the actual pliers. So I actually just got these. I have not even used these. These are um, Irwin, a long reach, uh, double jointed plier. Um, now that double joint uh, means it can be even longer and open up wider too. See that? Nice and wide. Now, of course, uh, needle nose pliers, if you ever need to open up something that wide, you're probably not going to be grabbing onto it, but handy to have. Um, I bought these just because um, it, it's sometimes if you got to fish something out of a tight space, maybe you're working on a car or something, you got to grab a bolt or something, um, something that uh, maybe a magnet can't quite get at, I don't know. Uh, maybe a screw or something you got to grab. This you can slide into nice skinny places, uh, clamp onto it, and pull it out. So be interesting to see. This is going to be one of those tools you probably won't use very often. Um, I just got them. They are machined very well. The finishing on it's uh, surprisingly nice for a um, you know kind of a, uh, a retail box store tool. Um, very nice grip. Um, I want to say these are about, uh, I want to say these are about twelve, thirteen dollars, something like that. So we'll be, we'll, it'll be interesting to see if we use this. I'd say for your average person, this probably is unnecessary. Um, this is going to be something you're probably only going to pull out, you know, once or twice a year probably. But these are things that when you need them, you need them, and it's the only time, the only tool that'll work. So. Be interesting to see if I use that. Next, let's go with another set of needle nose. Now, I also recently 
got these as well. As you can see, they haven't really been used that much, but I have used them a few times now. Very nice, very handy. Um, these are Orbis, which is a division of uh, Nipex. I know it's Knipex, but that sounds funny and it's more syllables, syllables so I'm just going to say Nipex. Um, uh, Nipex, uh, Orbis, very high quality pliers tools. Um, they're, they're very nicely machined. Um, the, the steel they're made out of, very tough. I'll show you in a minute a, a different pair of pliers that I've had that I've had for quite a while now. And they're just, they're very well made. Um, now these are an angled needle nose pliers, but instead of just being regular straight ones, they're angled. Um, that'll help you um, get a little bit more leverage on certain things. I like them. The, the ergonomics of them are kind of nice. Um, it also has these little grooves here. Now, if you're wondering what that's for, if you think about when you have to grab a hold of something um, with pliers and pull it towards you, let's say something skinny, maybe like a wire nail, something like that, something where you got to grab it and pull it back. Now, if you think about it, most of the time, what do you do? Grab a hold of it with the with the, the serrated edges, pull, and then what almost always happens, slips out. So these don't let you do that. They don't, they don't go into the, they don't go into the serrated part. They stay in that groove and you can pull on stuff. Um, there's probably um, other uses for it, but that's immediately what I thought of when I saw that. And then there's one, two, three, four different sizes where you can do that. This one's groove. So if you really need to clamp down on something, uh, you'll have a little bit more grip on it. And that's about it. Wire cutters on the back, very sharp. Um, I've used them a couple times already now. Um, very nice machining. The printing on them's nice. Uh, very fine tolerances. You can see there's no light being shown through the, uh, the cutters there. Um, same with the, same with the uh, needle nose tip. Uh, look how fine, uh, look how fine they, uh, if I can get it to focus here, that's asking a lot. The machining on these is just really good. The, they line up nice and nice and straight. And uh, the metal, same as on the Nipex, uh, very similar. The only difference is the handle is a little different. The, the, uh, the dipped, uh, the rubber handle is a little different. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you when I have another uh, Nipex. Sorry, not saying it. Kennebex. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you that in a little bit here. Um, but yeah, these are very handy. Um, probably a little overkill for most people. The Orbis brand. These are kind of expensive. I. You would be perfectly fine buying a pair of of channel locks. Um, you know, something more down those lines. This is probably a little overkill. These are about thirty dollars. Um, but when you think about all the things that they can do with the you know, the little slots there, you can grab a hold of something and pull. Um, and the fact that these will probably last you a lifetime pretty easily. So uh, we'll see how they do, see how handy they are. Um, it's always interesting on, you know, kind of slightly specialized versions of, uh, of uh, say, a neat regular needle nose pliers. It's interesting to see how often you'll actually uh, use them or how handy the the different features are, or if it's all just a bunch of BS. So we'll find out. Okay, let's move on to something, uh, probably the most interesting set of pliers here. Now, if you have heard or watched any videos on the, oh, uh, what are they called? Vam pliers. They have a red handle, um, and people just rave about them. Same thing. This is the exact same tool. It's made in this... Uh, same plant, except for this is directly from Japan. Uh, the vampires are also made in Japan. Obviously, they're made in the same factory. They just put a different name on them. Now, these are the engineer brand, or at least that's what they sell them under. And these come from Japan. Now, you can order them off Amazon now, and they, um, they ship from Amazon, so you don't have to wait extra time. Um, but these are the same thing as vampires. They're a little cheaper, 
same thing. So I w you might as well just save the 10 or $15, whatever the price difference is, get the green handle, and look at that, Negisaurus, it says RX, but I always say the Negisaurus Rex because, well, it's funny and it's got teeth on it. Now, these are very well made. See there, made in Japan, has the, has the specifications on there, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, these are PZ59. These are a pretty normal size pair of uh, pliers. Now, you're probably going, what are these for? Because uh, you can see there, you think, well, that's, that's kind of that's weird. It, you know, there's a big old opening there. Um, let me show you what these are for. Let me grab a, oh boy, let me grab a screw. Okay. So let's say you got a, a screw. Now this is a hex head screw, hex head screw. Let's say it's stripped out. Let's say it's a, uh, God forbid something be a flat head screw. We've moved on from the 1950s. It amazes me that companies still use flat head screws in uh, things. But let's say it's stripped out. How do you get it out? Well, there's a couple different ways. But one way is to take something like this grab onto it. Now you can see with those teeth how they're able to grab onto things. And if you want um, even more extreme or if, or if you got to pull something you can even bring it back here, pull it out. Um, but most of the time what you're going to do is you're going to grab it, clamp down, and unscrew it like that. And that it does work very well at doing that. Um, if you got old nails that you got to pull out, these are these are really good. These work well for that. Um, you just grab onto the nail. You can even grab them right on the tip of the nail, and just it'll grip it. And as long as you put a decent amount of pressure on there, you can pull it out. Um, now you might be thinking, well, is that any different than another set of pliers? Um, if uh, the biggest difference is the teeth, you can see there. Uh, they're high quality, they don't chip, nothing like that. You can really abuse them. I've put these ones to the test, pulling some nails out, um, strip, uh, stripped screw heads, things of that nature. These work really great. Again, I don't use them all the time, but when I do need them, these are pretty much the only thing that will do. So uh, if you're looking for something like that, save some money. Um, don't buy the vampires, you can if you want if you like the red handle, uh, but save some money, get the, get the Negisaurus Rex. How about that? Okay, let's move on. Okay, um, let's go to the last, and probably I'm going to say, actually, hold on, sneak, sneak peek. Something very similar to what I just showed you, um, or somewhat uh, similar, I should say, lineman pliers. Now, I bought these thinking, Oh, I'm going to use these all the time. You know, you can, you can grab onto stuff. You can cut it. Uh, I don't use them very often. I'll be honest. Um, these are more of a, I believe, an electrician tool. Um, you know, it's got grooves there. I believe that's called reaming. I think you jam it into an end of the pipe. You'll, you'll have to correct me. I'm not, uh, I'm not an electrician. So, yeah, don't really use these a whole lot. Um, to be honest, if you're just kind of a uh, looking for some uh, set of pliers for your home, I don't know if I'd buy a set of lineman pliers. Um, um, maybe a, maybe a cheaper set, something like this. Um, I think these were like twenty dollars. You'd be all right with that. As you can see, they are not cutting live wire proof for a vent hoods. Don't do that. You're going to create a lot of smart sparks, small fire, and you're going to wreck your uh, lineman pliers. So, only cuts right there now. That's okay. Let's move on. If you are going to buy one uh, kind of pliers, of all the ones I just showed you, let's just say you're not someone that want a you don't want a toolbox full of uh, different pliers or anything like that, just buy these. These are so versatile. They do so many things well. There are some, 
I would I would call them knockoffs. They're not knockoffs, of course, because um, some name brands. I believe you can buy them under. Um, I believe Irwin has something very similar to these now. Uh, they're Craftsman, uh, which is pretty much the new uh, uh, <laughs> low line for tools. I, it's sad what's happened to that brand, uh, especially with selling them in Lowe's right now, and they're just very sad-looking tools. Um, anyway, um, like I said, if you're going to buy a set of pliers, you might be tempted to buy a set of these. Some regular old tongue and groove, you know, channel locks. These are these are Tectons. Their headquarters is actually about a mile from my house. Um, honestly, hardly ever use these. I've had these for about a year and a half. Use them several times a week. Um, when I took my when we uh, ripped our bathroom apart, all the plumbing fixtures, everything. I literally ripped everything out using these, pulling nails, um, undoing uh, plumbing fittings, things like that. It's just so handy. You can see there how they can grip onto um, uh, uh, bolts. You can look how look how wide open they they open. Look at that. And I've had to open them up the whole way and use them. Tongue and groove pliers. You gotta you know they're kind of loose. You know, even the, even the channel locks, which is what most people call these um, because they were the original. Um, they're just loose. They don't really feel all that substantial. They um, Look how much wider those open up, the Nipex. Of course, these are that. These, these are not Orbis. These are, these are Knipex, but I'm going to call them Nipex. These are the 10-inch. I believe they call these water pump pliers. Um, don't ask me what for. Uh, there's probably a reason but I let me show you um, a, a good example of why these are uh, the best plier that you can buy Let's say you got a bolt okay now this is now this is a new one and you got to get it off it's in a tight area who knows whatever maybe in the house you don't feel like getting a socket set so you go and grab the old trusty channel locks, tectons, your craftsman from Lowe's. Okay, grab onto it. Now let's say it's really in there. Maybe it's part of uh, holding a piece of plumbing in. Excuse the rain outside hitting the uh, roof. Now what's the problem with this? It's only contacting two sides. It's going to want to, eventually it's going to want to slip and then you're just going to chew it up. It's got these deep serrated teeth and it's going to chew it up. So, go grab the old, the old Nipex. You, now, you can grab it a few different ways. I usually grab it back here. Now, look at that. One more corner of contact or side of contact. And it, I don't think I've ever put this on a fastener or anything where I had to loosen it um, where it didn't work. It, they're just they're incredible and it's just such a simple design and these the teeth on there I think I might have rounded off that edge just barely but if the amount of abuse I've I've put on these things and they're they're perfectly fine look at the teeth on there they're perfectly fine they're just as sharp as they were when I got them great when you need to adjust the size there's none of there's none of this, you know, uh, do that, guess, no, no, go go back, can't get it to go, you know, just a pain in the butt. And, you know, if you ever wanted to grab something, it's just the tip right there that actually, you know, something flatter. You know, there's just not a lot of purchase, uh, you know, surface area that you get on. Whereas this has got that nice flat area in the front where you can really grab onto something. It's got this back here. Very handy. I use that all the time. I put, if I got to grab onto something, put it back there. You know, you can put a lot of force back there. So these are the 10-inch ones. I'd say that's the best size. I think they're around $50 or so if you want to get the 7-inch, the 10-inch, and then the big 12-inch uh, one. Um, and then they make even bigger ones. But for most people, 10-inch, these are about $28. Uh, 
if if nothing else, if if you haven't listened to anything else I've said, just go get a pair of these. These are these are incredible. Um, you you will use them all the time. Um, it's got this nice, easy, quick adjust. You know, it's very adjustable. It's just perfect. So, if you took nothing else from what I just rambled on about, buy a pair of the Knipex. Knipex. Just call them Knipex. This is this is America. The K's are silent. Thanks for watching.